A lot of people uh, don't put emphasis on a neckline. The neckline is extremely important. You can make your client seem taller, shorter, thinner, or wider based on where you place these lines. And if, if you have a shorter client, you never, or you would rather not block off the bottom. Because it, a, a line is going to stop some stop growth. It's going to make somebody seem shorter. If you have a client that is shorter, if you taper out the bottom, it's going to make him seem taller. It's going to help him make it, help him feel a little bit better about himself. Debbie, we have a question. I'm sorry. He just said ear low to ear low, but the lows are down here. You know what? I think it's angles, and I think you're below us, and his head was tilted down. Does that make sense? So come up here, Debbie, please. Okay. Yep. Because see, actually from here, his ear low, if I put the comb under his ear, you see it's right here? See the end? Yeah. yeah. See that? Yeah. This is yeah. his ear low. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Down your bottom. yeah. So if we carry this straight. Yeah. And this, and, and these are these are suggestions. It's not law, but Tony's suggestion is if you find the ear lobes, which is here, and about an inch below the ear low, is a good place if you're going to block off a yeah, line. Yeah, they want to square around. Does that make sense? If you put it up here, it's the, the shape is not going to look attractive, not cute. Yeah. right? And if you put it way down here, it's going to connect to his back hair. Really not. Yeah, back hair. <laughs> okay. He doesn't have back hair, but if we put it too low, it's going to look like well, he's got he has back hair. No. <laughs> so, generally speaking, um, an attractive place to place a squared off neckline is an inch below the, the ear. And I think what happened is with Tony tilting his head down, with us being up, oh, yeah. maybe the angles oh, were a little bit deceiving. Is that look better right there? So, uh, That's a real fast, Tony talked about placement. What I'm going to teach is I'm going to let you guys know a few techniques to actually to actually help with techniques for lining up. Do you have one question? I was wondering what the fluffy brush and other brush Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a bit. Neck duster? You can't baby use brush. Oh, <laughs> Why the baby brush, guys? How do you oh, man. How do we sanitize that? Because so when you cut, cut these little shavings, especially when they get a little warm under the drape, they start to perspire a little bit. And those shavings lay flush with the scalp. And sometimes you're trying to blend out an area that you just keep re chopping the same chopped hair. It's just laying flush. And so you got to use your baby brush. And, and, and brush that out. Yes. And then this one, this one's a neck duster. You can use towel. The question was, how do you clean that? They sell dry cleaner, uh, dry powder cleaner. Yeah. You knew the answer before you asked that. Uh, you just, yeah. Okay. Right. The question was asked, how did this affect these items? Now, with the new state board regulations, they make non-porous brushes and neck dusters. And non-porous, um, which means, do you know what non-porous means? Yeah. Doesn't have pores. It's not going to soak and hold on to any. Uh, liquids or outside, um, whatever. Non-porous devices can be um, disinfected in quads or with spray or with the dry, dry disinfectant. Yeah. Yeah. Did that answer yeah. your question? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. A little bit gentler on the eyes too. Yeah. You guys ever try, you know, if you don't have one of these, it's okay. Roll up a, roll up a towel. Roll up a towel and brush it off that way. It's okay. Much it's better. Just a little more fancy. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so Tony talked about placement. Placement with lines in the front. Um, in the back of the other Tony's hair. And what I'm going to talk about is technique. How do you hold a trimmer? You hold it the exact opposite way you hold a clipper. You want to hold a clipper on the back with your four fingers on the back of the clipper, thumb on the stomach. You hold a trimmer the exact opposite. You turn it around. The trimmer will lie on four fingers with your thumb on the back. Now, I'm going to show you a technique that's very, very important. It's called a triple threat finger. I see people lining up, and they have the clipper like a baseball bat. They're choking their um, their snake, and they're just trying to reach out and line their client up. If I was to hold a trimmer and try to hold it perfectly steady, I couldn't. There's, it's impossible to hold a trimmer perfectly steady, pointing it out. So what do I do? I use one of my four fingers. I place it on my client's skin. And that's going to stabilize the trimmer. You want to stabilize your trimmer before you cut to eliminate any movement. So before I make a cut, in this case I'll use my middle finger, I'm going to stabilize it on the scalp, 
I'm going to eye my cutting point, I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to rock forward. That rocking motion um, helps your finger act like a fulcrum. So your finger is going to act like a stabilizer, it's going to act like a fulcrum, and the third function of your triple threat finger is going to act as a compass. There are actually circular curves at different points on a mid scalp, around the ear, and then the temple curve. So if I want to cut a nice, smooth temple curve lineup on Evan, I would use my triple thread finger, I would place it out to stabilize my, tri my, my trimmer, and now how does it act like a compass? You simply spin the trimmer while it's balanced. So from here, it's stabilized, I will spin the, the trimmer in a circle, and you guys see how I'm creating a nice, a nice smooth circular lineup around the temple. Now you're going to do the same thing above the ear. If my pinky is going to be my stabilizer finger. I'm going to place it way down here on my pointer finger, and I'm going to go around the ear in a circle. So remember, anytime when lining up, when placing the lines where Tony's talking about, you're going to use your triple threat finger. It's going to stabilize, it's going to act as a fulcrum, and it's going to act as a compass. Talk to us, Tony. What does it look like over there? Yeah, yeah. So uh, someone asked a question, what was this machine here? So this is the, this is the five star shaver. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like a shaver that us guys use, use on the face. This is a more uh, of our industry strength kind of a shaver. Really cool thing. Uh, as you can see, look how clean that is. It's almost as if I use a razor blade on. Do you guys see how clean that is? So it's a balder. Yeah, it's called five star shaver. Uh, no, it just gets close because of the, how thin the, 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 uh, the screen is on this. And it does have a really good one out right now. Say, well, you know, I don't want to get caught using a straight razor, you know, I'm not licensed for that. Uh, this gets pretty darn close, as you can see. Yeah. That's no, pretty good the, right the there. So I'm going to do a ball taper in the back, or I'm going to do a zero, uh, zero taper in the back. So uh, as you guys watch me, I'm going to. I'm going to start doing this tape back here. The reason why I want to do that is a piece of hair. <laughs> How many of you would freak out right there? Right there, yeah? yeah? There's different techniques of doing a taper. I still use the, the fang method. The fang method is that I, I go ahead and zero out the center, leaving two fangs on the sides. That's, that's not, you know, not everybody does that. That's just the way that I do it. How many of you look at this and go, oh my god, you, you just messed up the entire haircut? Does that scare anybody? No, scare anybody? Uh, you'll blend it. No, you don't blend it. Yeah, yeah, I'll blend it. Yeah, I'll take care of it. I wouldn't do that to talk. Yeah. So, so I'm going to go ahead and zero this out. And then if this is uh, down to a zero and this is a one, what do you think is in between a zero and a one? Uh, and you guys are amazing. Look at that. It's simple math. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and throw a half guard on here. And, uh, and hey, I'll how sharp is your um, blade? Uh, half guard. Any questions so far? Yes. So, you know how they have Oscars? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you recommend the wall? Man, I'm going to let Dave answer that one. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. I never know what my future holds, so I'm going <laughs> to. Andy. <laughs> now, going through your career, different people get exposed to different tools. I I work for Andy, um, but before I even got hired by Andis, that's all I used was Andis. I used Andis because, in my, in my mind, um, in my experience, Everything Andis makes is commercial. They make stuff to last. Andis doesn't make clippers uh, that you're gonna see at Walmart or Target. They don't make clippers to cut little Johnny's hair in the backyard. They make hair, for, uh, hair tools for professionals. Um, and that's why I've always been a big Andis user because their the quality and the longevity of their equipment to me outshines everything. Question? Only reason I said that was because it already has the hats. So it's going into this, but it has to so you're talking about half sizes. Um, one thing that can get confusing, just like you might get a, a client that comes in and uses different terminology to describe a haircut. I want a one, I want a two, I want a half, uh, I want a four. Uh, I had a guy come in and uh, tell a barber, you know, he just wanted one, you know. The guy gave him a number one all around, the guy flipped out. He said, you cut me bald, man, I have long hair. 
He said, you asked for a one. He says, no, I just wanted one inch off of my hand. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> client consultation. Yeah. Communication is the key. Communication yeah. and client consultation. Keisha, right? Yep. What Keisha is up here to talk about is important. Uh, so when Tony said a half, a half clip in this brand it might not exist in this brand. It might be an actual link. It might be a 116. I know Andis has a guard uh, that they call a zero. Mm. It's weird, zero guard, but it's a 116, which is below a one eighth, which is a one. And then guess what? And then you get into these bad boys. Does anybody know what this is? Attachment. Then you get into the detachable blades. And this detachable blade here says three and a half. But what do you need to look for? You need to look for the link. Because every guard or every metal blade or attachment cone has an actual link. The, the length of this metal blade says 9.5 millimeters. And if I look at this zero attachment cone, the zero attachment cone also is 1 16th of an inch or 1.5 millimeters. So understanding what your client's saying Understanding kind of what you're using um, is something that you guys are going to have to get used to. I had a guy sit in my chair and he said he wanted number five blowout. <clears throat> he was visiting in town from Miami. I always thought that a blowout was like a Jersey Shore haircut. But in Miami, a blowout is just a taper. But I didn't understand what he was saying. I told him to pull up one of the selfies that he took. He had like a thousand selfies. Like, Let me see a selfie that you have from two or three weeks ago so I can know what type of haircut you're talking about. I'm like, oh man, out here we just call that a taper. You want a number five with a taper. But where he was from, they called it a number five with a blowout. So understanding definitions uh, and, and links and how you describe haircuts is very, very important.